As we have discussed the processes of spermatogenesis and oogenesis in great detail, let us now evaluate what are the major point of differences between these two processes. Before I begin with, remember that spermatogenesis is a continuous process. So a human male is going to produce sperms throughout his life and it is what? It is a continuous process. And in case of oogenesis, in oogenesis there are phases which are of longer duration. Okay, there are lot of resting phases. So it has a long resting phase. So oogenesis is not continuous. Why it is not continuous? Because it has a long resting phase. So let us move on to the point of differences between these two processes. Number one. Spermatogenesis takes place in the testis. You all know that spermatogenesis means the formation of sperms. And the sperms are the, are the male gametes. So they are going to be formed in what? They are going to be formed in male gonads that is testis. And in uh, this oogenesis, you all know that oogenesis is the formation of ova or egg. And ova or egg is the female gamete. So it takes place in the ovaries. Ovaries are the female gonads. Next, the growth phase in spermatogenesis is short, but the growth phase in oogenesis is very long. It can take uh, from few days even to many years. So it has a longer growth phase. In spermatogenesis, spermatocytes have cytoplasm and nucleus with normal contents. You all know that uh, during the formation of sperm, the cytoplasm is going to condense out and this its volume reduces. The volume of cytoplasm reduces. So that is why they have cytoplasm and nucleus with normal contents. But in case of ova or egg, these oocytes have cytoplasm rich in RNA. ATP, enzymes and yolk nucleus chromosomes. So as compared to a spermatocyte, oocytes have, have more content in the, in the cell. Okay? But in this case, the, uh, they have cytoplasm with normal contents in the cell. But in addition to the normal contents, oocytes are rich in RNA, ATP, enzymes and yolk plus nucleus and chromosomes also which are which are very giant big very big chromosomes next we move on to the fourth point a primary spermatocyte divides equally to form two similar secondary spermatocytes from a primary spermatocyte two similar secondary spermatocytes are formed but in case of a primary oocyte it divides unequally to form one large secondary oocyte plus one polar body. And this polar body is not equivalent to this. This polar body is very small and it is non-functional. So in this case, a primary oocyte forms a secondary oocyte. A, 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 this is only one in number. This is functional. But it also produces one polar body which is very minute and is non-functional. Next, fifth point. A secondary spermatocyte also divides equally forming two similar spermatids. Again there is equal division. The secondary spermatocyte which is formed it is again going to form two similar spermatids. But in this case a, a secondary oocyte divides unequally again to form one large ovoid, which is again functional but one non-functional minute polar body. Okay, So remember this. And cells remain interconnected up to the formation of spermatids in case of spermatogenesis. But in this case, oogonia are separate and surrounded by follicle cells as we have studied in the structure in greater detail already. Then a spermatogonium produces four functional spermatozoa. But in this case, an oogonium produces one ovum only. Here you can see, we have four functional spermatozoa. But here an oogonium produces one ovum and three polar bodies which are actually not functional. Then we move on to the eighth point. Spermatozoa are minute, streamlined, yolkless and motile. They are motile means they can move because they have to swim and they have to penetrate the ovum. And they are minute, smaller in size, streamlined. They are streamlined. Why? Because they have to actually swim and reach to the egg or ova. They are yolkless, they don't have any yolk and they are motile. But in this case, ova are larger in size, they are rounded and often they have yolk and they are non-motile, they cannot move. 
then sperm mother cells continue to multiply throughout the life but this ovary has at birth all the egg mother cells it will ever have this is a very important point you all must remember this that in case of human males the sperm mother cells continue to multiply throughout life that is why it is a continuous process remember but in case of human females ovary has at birth all the egg mother cells it will ever have so uh, it, from the time of birth only a human female has all the egg mother cells it will ever have only those egg cells that already were present during the birth are going to divide to form the mature ova or the egg and since it has a longer resting phase as i told you so remember that ovary has at birth all the egg mother cells it will ever have means the number of cells that will form over our egg is already limited and is fixed from the time of birth only in case of females in case of this process that is oogenesis so let us recall all the point of differences again we were talking about spermatogenesis which is a continuous process and oogenesis which is which is not continuous since it has longer resting phase it takes place in testes because we are talking about males and it takes place in ovaries that is female gonads then growth phase is shorter here the growth phase is of longer duration it can take few days to many years also spermatocytes have cytoplasm and nucleus with normal contents but in case of oocytes they have much much more content as compared to these then a primary spermatocyte divides equally to form two similar secondary spermatocytes but a primary oocyte divide unequally to form one large secondary oocyte which is functional plus one non functional minute polar body also so in this case as a whole we can summarize that only one ovum or you can say egg is going to be produced one ovum or egg is going to be produced after this complete process but in this case spermatogenesis at this case you all must remember that we will have four spermatozoa so we'll here have four spermatozoa but what about the other cells you all should remember that here we have only one ovum or egg plus three minute very small polar bodies which are non functional okay so this is the end result of spermatogenesis and oogenesis here at the end we're going to have four spermatozoa but in oogenesis we're going to have one ovum or egg with three minute non functional polar bodies so i hope that this points of difference between spermatogenesis and oogenesis is now very clear to you